Well, we'll fix that. Welcome to Zero Page <laughs> Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari 2600 and 7800 games broadcasting at 60 frames a second. How many? 60. Um, and tonight, I'll say the same joke. We have, we have no games, but we actually have lots of games because we have a developer spotlight on Bob DeCrescenzo. The, one of the most prolific, if not the most prolific, 7800 homebrew developer ever. Um, so we'll be running through very quickly his games because he has so many. I don't even know how we're going to do it, but we're going to get through them somehow. But before we bring him on, I want to thank all of our Twitch subscribers again. Hal in the Fur, Armscar Coder, Cafe Man 2D, Canadian Tender, Catalogs, Charles in Check, Coconut 81, Dino Dan, FEC, Drexel, I'm Dan, Fat Beavis, Great Defender, Grosjour, Rapper, Ground Trooper, Johnny WC, Juan Urata, Jupiter Storm, Carl G, Kev Kelly, Croco, Leo the Low, Malchitos, Mark Space Inc., Matthew Lazor Lazarus, uh, Metal Atari, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Nathan Strom, Packer at VG, Quahog, RC70, Repentless VG, Six Sweet Smitty B, Socrates, Spiceware, Esmeralds, the D Train, Welshman 89, and Tiki Dan K, all the people down to the side of Tanya there. Her side, right Cycling side. Cycling through, I feel like your there perspective. Are a bunch right more names, bunch more names. Than yeah, some the I didn't new ones even. ones I've never yeah. seen before, so and, uh, it's awesome. You could support the show and subscribe for free as well if you link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime and click subscribe and make sure you follow, subscribe, and click like on all the things Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter so that you can be informed of special shows like this where we bring on developers and talk to them about their games and you can learn more about them and ask them questions live on the show. And that is the bonus of this show is that we do it live and there's interaction. So now I would like to introduce, as I get it ready, uh, introduce to you, like I said, probably one of the most prolific developers ever on the Atari 7800 homebrew game scene. Uh, and he's developed games such as Baby Pac-Man, Scramble, Bentley Bears Crystal Quest, Unawar S, and Galaxian. Um, so please, welcome to the show for his developer spotlight on Zero Page Homebrew, Bob DeCrescenzo, AKA Pac-Man Plus. So let's see if we can hear him and everything's good. Welcome, Bob. <laughs> Oh, no, oh, not yet. Let me unmute you. And we should be having you. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Excellent. We do have you. Let me just turn you up just a little bit here. So how are you doing today, Bob? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. A little nervous, but I'm fine. <laughs> so, oh, uh, that's fine. We're not going to ask you any questions that you don't know, because all we're going to be talking about is your games. And who knows better the answer than you. Um, I love the earrings, by the way. You notice them. There we go. I didn't quite I, hear him. Is it? Can you turn it up a little? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he said he loves the earrings. Hey, thank you. <laughs> um, she wore them just coincidentally. Oh yeah, completely. For the show. <laughs> yeah, if people can't see their um, little Pac-Man earrings. That's a right. ghost. Which uh, yeah. the red one? Which one is the red one? Blinky. Yeah. Excellent. So. Um, so welcome to Zero Page Homebrew. Probably the last time, and probably the first time we ever met, uh, was at PRGE 2019, yeah. possibly, where I caught you on camera, yeah. and you were talking about, um, probably, uh, Baby Pac-Man, uh, pinball game. I think it was debuting that year. It was just being released at the Atari Age booth. Yeah. Um, so we caught you on camera there, and you talked a little bit about your game, which was which was awesome. I didn't even uh, prepare that you were there, and you were just there, so it was really great to run into you. But now we have a proper forum to do it, to do it in. So I'm very excited to have you on the show. Um, so you have a ton of games. Oh, it's a problem. I can't hear it very well. That doesn't have any audio. No, none. No. no. Um, I don't know. Let's just make sure Tanya has some audio here. <laughs> it's just very choppy. Very choppy? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we'll see. Just deal with it for now. So the other side doesn't work? No. Just mm -hmm. one side. Mm -hmm. Technical fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have uh, a massive, massive amount of games. And I don't know if anybody expects us to go through all of them. 
we can't. It's just going to be impossible. So we're probably going to gloss over some of the hacks that you've done. Um, and uh, But we'll try and get to as many as possible. So what we're going to start with is, I don't know if uh, many people know, but you actually have done some 2600 games. Um, I have a list of, I think, four here. Um, yeah, four that you've uh, either uh, hacked or uh, adapted, uh, or and one that you have actually made from scratch, which is Pickaxe Pete. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to finish that. <laughs> Yeah, you'll have to get back to finishing that. So the first one we're going to take a look at, if you want to pick up the controller there, is um, Pac-Man, which is a hack of Alien that you did. Oh, God. In 2003. <laughs> um, so it, it is way back, and I believe you joined the forums in 2002. Yes. Uh, the Atari Age forums. And, uh, yep, go for it. Let me just make sure we're not blowing anybody's eardrums here. Oh, probably going to have to press reset myself. There we go. Any audio coming out? There we go. Um, and uh, the first post that you ever made <laughs> on the Atari Age forums uh was is there a way to make regular pac-man out of junior pac-man um and you said i was thinking about this one being that junior pac-man scrolls vertically someone can actually create the pac-man or miss pac-man or even hangley man maze at the correct aspect ratio and just have it scroll like uh, the nes miss pac-man version that would be a cool idea i've already replaced the monster graphics um but i haven't gone deep enough into the code to start changing things like that and that's kind of a uh, a thing that has gone forward with your 7800 versions of Pac-Man where you didn't feel like crushing down the maze onto a single screen and didn't want to distort it so it's kind of wider in a 4x3 as well. Um, so um, let's let's just start with your name, uh, your, your pseudonym on the forums, Pac-Man Plus. Obviously you're obsessed with with Pac-Man, so is Pac-Man Plus obviously your favorite Pac-Man game? Yes, it's it's a it's tied between that one and this Pac-Man actually, but yeah, that's basically yeah. Yeah, my favorite game. And, and do you have a uh, full-size cabinet in your house? Yes, I do. Of, yeah. So which ones do you have? I'm I'm guessing Ms. Pac-Man. I uh, yeah, I have. A, I actually have them on a Switch. I have the actual arcade boards. I have six of them in a in the cabinet on the Switch. Um, so I have Pac-Man, Hangley Man, uh, Pac-Man Plus, Ms. Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man Plus, and yeah. I have a conversion of Junior Pac-Man to the, to the, um, connector that they use for the Pac-Man, uh, arcade games, just the proprietary connector. So that's in there too, so I have those six. So you're able to switch them out at any time yeah. you need them. Okay, good. And and somebody said, "Nice Atari age here, Bob. You came you came prepared, representing." <laughs> yes. Um. So is is this at your actual first Atari game that you hacked or made, or were you doing it before you joined the Atari age forum? No, I wasn't doing it before I joined the Atari age boards. I the first one I did, I think I hacked. Rob Kudla's a better Pac-Man um, into Pac-Man Plus. At least the graphics and the you know and the, and the uh, not the maze and the colors and stuff like that. Um, okay. That was the first one I did, and okay. that may have been second. So okay. we're playing now. Um, now we're gonna move on to your next game, Alternate Adventure Hack. 2005. Just one second. Let me reboot this. I have to jump up all the time. Uh -huh. So, uh, you're. Uh, do you, obviously, Pac Man is your first uh, 
first love because yeah. <laughs> that's definitely the one you've made the most of oh yeah that one yeah um but i've noticed you also enjoy a lot of shooters uh fixed fixed shooters mm -hmm. uh as well as side scrolling shooters with scramble as well so would shooters be your second favorite genre uh or... i'm sorry no go ahead uh, before Pac-Man, my favorite was Asteroids. So um, I guess between the, the Galaga, Astro, uh, I, I just lost you, I think. Oh, yeah, you froze. I can still see your video. Yeah, you froze. I, I, but uh, it's frozen. So maybe stop your video and then start it again. Oh, there we go. We got you back. Okay. Um, so I, like Gallagher and Galaxian, those were those are um, those are my one of my favorites too as well. So but yeah, the Mooncrest I played a lot, and a lot of the B games, you know, I played a lot because they were around in the stores and stuff like that back in the day. Right. So, um, yeah. so so where does adventure come in? Was it just something that you uh, wanted to do and uh, alter it? Um, adventure was my favorite twenty six hundred game. So. Oh, okay. So yeah, I wanted to. I always wanted to have basically the only real thing I think I changed in that was using the number room. The, the when you first turn on the game it has the number, including that, and in the I just wanted to see. It was just a test. I just wanted to see if I could do it. Yeah. Um, and then let's go to Pickaxe Pete. I remember very little about. Sorry. It's like ruining your game. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually. Uh, your first and only 2600 game that you started from scratch? Yeah, <laughs> yes, that is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had I had help from John Champeau, um with that. Ah, well, that's good. A good help. And he actually, actually, the animation is really nice. Like he does some diving, and he does some. Uh, I think you're able to do like a, a move along the ground as well. Yeah, I, I. Yep, there you go. It, what's funny is I can't, I can't see what you're playing. Is that I, I don't remember having gone that far. Said, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, there's no enemies. There's nothing to pick up. Like there's, you have interaction between the level and yourself, like the, the play field. But that's about it. So you got, you got fairly far, and um. So what, what made you do the switch? From 2600 to 7800. Well, I actually did some 5200 games uh, hack okay. actually in the middle between that because um, I what happened was I found I found um, a half disassembly of the 5200 version of Pac-Man. Yeah. And um, that's what made me you know recognize the assembly code from my Apple days. Where I used to have an Apple IIc back. You know, then in the eighty four yeah. and, and I used to do assembly on that. And I, you know, I remember seeing this this, this assembly and going, "That was familiar." But and right. anyway, making long story short, I started fooling around with that, and I then I started I made Pac Man Plus and and Hanging Man for two hundred first. Then I found uh, seventy hundred. Okay, so actually, speaking of of the history of of uh, programming, where what was your first computer and your first console and take us through the progression oh God. Of, of of your programming um, expertise my first computer was a ti 994a in 81 um the next and we had a 2600 we had my father actually had an electronic shop and he brought home the odyssey the first odyssey um that was that came out in 72 and i still have it um in my uh in my closet and this was an odyssey game correct that was the two game, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and oh. <laughs> Just pulling her ears out, yeah. Um, Lots of fun. I tried to get some uh, some wireless ones, but they just aren't cooperating, so we're still on the wired. I'll get that going next time. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's... A re and at that time, we had, we had just gotten 2600. Um, I moved on to the Apple IIc in 84 because my school had it. Yeah. My school just got a you know a whole bunch of them, so we, we I've gotten one too, and um, that's when I learned started learning assembly language on the on that on the Apple IIc. Okay. Oh, okay. Never mind about that. <laughs> um, go to uh, go back to that directory. 
and uh, Pac-Man Plus. Then. And uh, okay, so you develop, you uh, learned how to do uh, assembly on uh, the tw on the Apple IIc. And uh, so do you develop uh, in assembly uh, for the 7800, or do you develop in 7800 Basic? I do assembly for the 7800. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I, I don't think there's too many uh, assembler developers. I don't know a ton about the 7800, so you have to bear with me. Bear with me here. I know that 7800 Basic is used quite a bit. Yeah. Um, um, so I think I, I played a game the other day that also was written in assembly, and uh, it, it was quite intricate. Uh, That's uh, amazing, dude. People are doing an awesome job today with the uh, It's really powerful. I, I, I can't, couldn't believe my eyes on some of them. Yeah, it's, it's really, really a powerful language to work to work with. Oh yeah. So you uh, fulfilled your name uh, and, and did Pac-Man Plus on the twenty six hundred. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that we're showing right now. Um, so what is it about Pac-Man Plus uh, that makes it better than the other Pac-Mans. The randomness. There's a lot of random stuff, like one monster randomly won't turn blue if you eat them in your week energizer. Um, I like the fact that eating the fruit makes them turn invisible, and they're worth double points. Uh, the, the maze will randomly disappear at times. You know, just little, little yeah. things that they, they're making hard to have a pattern. Right, so a little bit more challenging, a little bit more interesting. Um, so, let's see if there's any questions from the crowd. So what, what inspired you, this is from Neo Media, what inspired you to develop games on the 2600 and then 7800? What drew you to both of those platforms? Honestly, the, the, I, I tried the 2600 first and it was too difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's very limited. Very, very limited in what uh, resources you have, that's for sure. And um, I, I was going to go with the 200 at first, but I noticed that not many people were doing at the time. Not many people were doing things on 7800. It was kind of an underdog. I like underdog <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no kidding. Especially if you develop for the 5200 as well uh, for a short period. That's a, a big underdog system. Well, at the time, it was bigger than the 7800, at least in the, wow. the at Atari age. You know, it was... It was uh, Probably for the crossover between the computer system, mm -hmm. um, because of the, the shared, you know, architecture that they have. Yeah. True. Um, but yeah, then I found, I, I found the 7800, and I, I noticed that it didn't have regular Pac-Man, so I wanted to fix that. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> And uh, what about the 7800 that keeps you uh, going on the 7800? I just enjoy programming for it. I, I, I just, I like doing it. Yeah, that's what really keeps me going on it. And I've, I've gotten mediocre at it, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> well, probably some people would disagree, but... Uh... <laughs> um... So, now that we've taken a look at some of your 2600 games, we're going to start moving on to uh, your 7800 games. So, we're going to probably go through the Pac-Mans first, as, as, a, as a whole. Yeah, and, and, and get, them, get through them as fast as we can. No, um, because there's so many of them. I think you, you have a, um, a mission to conquer every single Pac-Man game ever made. Um, so let me switch over to that. And I do have some of your Pac-Man games here. Oh, wow. Actually. Nice. We have Junior Pac-Man, uh, Super Pac-Man, uh, Pac-Man Collection, and, of course, one of your newer ones, Baby Pac-Man. Thank you. And very unique. Thank you. So, uh, oh, Bentley Bear's Quest is not the one we're going to start with. We are going to do them in order, of chronological order, and uh, let's start with uh, Super Pac-Man, where you finished that in uh, 2008, October 10th. 
It was at least the latest version of it. So let me load that up. Sorry to everybody in the crowd of the loud uh, sound from the audio from the games. I've turned it down now, so hopefully it's better. Um, Vitoko 8-Bits asks, uh, do you prefer to write games or to play them? Because I know a lot of developers um, have to play their own games a lot. Yeah, I actually and, uh, I prefer writing them. I very rarely yeah. just play the games that I've done. Yeah, and are you super sick of them after you finished making yes. making the game? <laughs> yeah, you probably explored absolutely everything there is possible, and and does it make you better at playing the game after developing it? Yeah, no, actually it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially in Galaga's case, uh, Galaxian case, um, I uh, yeah. I was never good at Galaxian, and I'm still not good at Galaxian. <laughs> but I, it, I know is, it is challenging, especially on the harder like. Uh, when you first posted it, I was playing it on, on easy or something. And uh, I was like, oh, this is a really, really easy game. But uh, as you posted more and more versions, and then I set it to hard, it's like, oh, oh no, it's kicking my ass. It is not easy. That's probably when I changed over to um, adapt the arcade Z80 code over to the 6502. Once that happened, it, the difficulty went whoop. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, way up. Um, waiting for Pac Mania, Arena Foot says. Um, so is that one? What which games haven't you converted over? Which Pac Man games haven't you converted over to the seven eight hundred yet? Um, Pac Mania, of course. Yeah. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Pac Man, but that's a pinball game. I don't, don't want to. Um, <laughs> you don't want to take on another pinball game? No. <laughs> <laughs> that one was hard enough. Um, yeah. Um, Pac and Pal which I had never heard of until I saw it in Maine. Because um, I think it was only released overseas, if I'm not mistaken. I, mean, I may be wrong on that, but I, I think it was only released overseas. But um, yeah, that one I hadn't done. And Ms. Pac-Man Twin, um, I started. But now that it's finished, I don't probably finish it. Now that it's finished, right. uh, and I mean... And I, and I guess we're just counting Maze Pac-Man games, not not like oh. Pac-Land and, and, and various other ones, and like 3D ones and ones that are more advanced, yeah. more arcade ones back in the day. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, after Super Pac-Man, uh, you made Ms. Pac-Man 320. Now, if, I'm going to load it up one second. Yeah, I'm just going to interrupt you, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was man. just getting the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you let everybody know what the 320 refers to? It refers to the resolution on the 7800, 320 mode, um, which has twice as many dots as 160 mode. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um, it was, that was more of an experiment just to see if I could do it um, and if it would, how it would come out doing that. Because I, I saw the NES one, had this, the Tengen version anyway, had the scrolling yeah. screen from this pac uh, Okay. So it, it gave me the idea of doing it on here and trying to get the actual arcade dimensions and, and all that. I right. wanted to see how it came out. And plus the limited colors. I had to work with the limited colors of, of that mode, the 20B mode. <clears throat> right, and how, how many colors does uh, the 320 mode have? Is it four, three plus a transparency, or what is? If you have transparency turned on, you have two palettes. Each palette has three colors, but one of the colors only works in a certain way. The colors are in pairs, so if, okay. if the if pairs of pixels, excuse me. Um, yeah. And only if the first color is backed with one of the other two colors and not itself or the background, it'll show up. Otherwise, it'll be invisible. Oh, my so. God. So <laughs> it, that, that sounds very difficult to plan out. And I guess if it works with the game, then it's great. But you have to really think ahead yeah. um, which mode you're going to be using. 
um, to, with your game. Yeah. And, and and how does it? What is the resolution of Pac-Man in the arcade uh, compared to the seventy-eight hundred version here? Uh, two forty-four by two eighty-eight. If I'm not mistaken, um, it's like a TV on its side, so it, okay. it would use a normal three twenty by two forty mode uh, for a regular TV, but it only uses you know, two. You're going this way two <laughs> yeah. by two eighty-eight. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's uh, and, and and were you. And did you do a pixel for pixel recreation of the arcade? Yeah. Um, yeah. I ripped and graphics would... directly from the arcade game when I did that. Oh, even better. But what's uh, what's your cat's name? <laughs> and yeah. That looks like a different cat. What are your cat's names? <laughs> no, no, this is just the same one. Um, oh, okay. Sneakers is the name. Cause she's Sneakers. <laughs> oh. I, I, I call her worse names than that, but I... <laughs> <laughs> but, but when they're good, it's Sneakers. <laughs> Uh, I thought I saw questions. Um, oh, Neo Media asks uh, if somebody new wanted to develop games for the 7800, what advice would you give them? And and would you advise them to start on the 7800 or start somewhere else? Um. Well, um, I would try to get them to have a programming, some sort of programming background first, like to to start with basic. I mean, basically, probably be the best place to start um, right and i that's basic that's that's about where i seriously <laughs> um and i guess because basic would uh start informing them about the 7800 yeah. and what it's capable of without diving too much into assembly and and oh and a follow-up question um would you advise them to get into assembly afterwards, or is uh, 7800 Basic um, uh, powerful enough to do a lot of things that you would want to do? Um, that I don't know. I, I haven't used 7800 Basic myself, but I would say, from judging from what I've seen, absolutely, um, yeah. it's it's good. It's good enough because I I just I, between Popeye and yeah. I, so and well, somebody's working on something I can't say right. <laughs> oh, you almost <laughs> let it slip. I almost slipped. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's you could at this point you could absolutely stay with with coming into basic and you get just as just as much done. Yeah, yeah, with uh, with Popeye and that other one, uh, it's it's very very powerful and it can do quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, forgive me, she's knocking uh, things on the floor. Well, cats are really good at that. <laughs> that's that's their favorite thing to do. Okay, so we're gonna go to uh, Pac Man 320 briefly. Okay. Oh, the naming. That should be good enough. It has only eight letters. Oh, Dragonfly with your limitations of eight characters. <laughs> I have like multiple Pac-Mans and I'm like, I don't know, Pac-Man 1 or Pac-Man 2. <laughs> um, so, uh, with Pac-Man here, it, um, just looking at the screen here. Um, so was it, was it much of a stretch from, uh, how much code could you reuse between the, the Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man? Um, was it quite a, a stretch to go between them? Like, obviously the mazes are different, but um, there must be some common code that you could reuse. Oh yeah, most uh, most of the logic was, was reusable. Um, it's only uh, the, the difference between Pac-Man and this Pac-Man is, the, is the, there's, a, there's a couple of key points. Um, the way the monsters reverse, um, the initial movement of two of the monsters, Pinky uh, uh, and Blinky. Um, are random in the first like seven seconds instead of going to their corners. The other two go to the corner. But, um, right. So monster just, logic. Yeah, a couple, a couple of little things like that. That's you know, that's all I had to change. But um, yeah. Yeah. But most of it was reused. Oh, good. Um, a question from Atari Twenty Six Hundred, dude. Uh, what is your favorite original release uh, seventy eight hundred game? Or which one do you play the most? Um, and did you have a 7800 back in the day? No. Or is it something? No. Okay. Not have, I had the 5200, I had the 2600. Did not have the 7800. 
that you read. Yeah. Um, original release by me or somebody else? Uh, uh, somebody else. One of the one of the original titles. I think there's like. Oh, uh, the the Atari's title. Okay. Um, yeah, Atari's when it when it was originally out. I can't remember how many there are. Fifty nine or something. Yeah. Fifty nine. Yeah. Knowing what they had out now, if I had had it back then, I would probably say Galaga. And um, yeah. um, well, Miss. One Pac of my favorite games too. Oh really? Cool. Yeah. Um, probably Miss Pac-Man. Um, yeah. And Asteroids. Ah, yep, yep. So we're gonna move on to Junior Pac-Man now. I don't know if any of these use Atari Vox, but I have it plugged in anyway. <laughs> oh, 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 is that what I hear? Oh, no, no, yeah, no. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what the digitized noise in the background is. Uh, Junior Pac-Man kicks my ass on the 2600. Yeah. <laughs> it is so, so hard. Yeah. Uh, it, the, the ghosts just seem to make a beeline for you. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, another one? No? Oh, do I have to press reset? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, there we go. Excellent. Yeah, on the 20... Oh my god, it's so fast. <laughs> the 2600, they inverted it vertically. Um, and you've uh, done uh, the original arcade of horizontal scrolling, which would have been impossible on the 2600. Um, so, let's see what uh, questions... Another question. What are your thoughts on 5200 programming versus 7800 programming? And that is from Cafe Man 2D. Uh, because he's a 5200 programmer. Are you good? <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't done enough of it. Um, I, I, I did, you know, the, the modifications to Pac Man to, to be, you know, uh, Hangling In or, or Pac Man Plus or whatever, but I didn't do enough of my own programming on that to know. From what I understand, it's not, it, it's along the same line, the, the playlists are different between the 5200 and 7800, but um, I, I think it's it's not that bad, not that different in, in the long run as far as logic and stuff like that goes. I mean, they use the same process, but, um, Yeah. So I, I, I don't know, I have to work, it has a pokey. So I'm, I have perfect right. pokey, so um, I I could probably take a shot at it. I mean, I won't I, I won't <laughs> be anywhere near like what what Cafe Man does, but um, right. But yeah, I I, uh, I I could like it. I probably could. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and speaking of pokey chips, um, you've taken advantage of pokey chips and Yamaha audio chips. Uh, in a number of your games, uh, both of which were present in the fabled XM module, um, but are now in the uh, Dragonfly uh, cart. Um, so, uh, along with the new Concerto cart, which um, now the Dragonfly and the Concerto offer a lot of options for people because they're available, um, and expands the audio options past, you know, simple TIA uh, sound. Are, are you more inclined to offer these options in games going forward um, because they're more available? And, and do you see that affecting other developers' choices in audio options? Um, probably. I say I see that affecting other people's. The, the, the um, Yamaha, I didn't really do much on. Uh, that was uh, Tech 392. That was very, you did amazing sounds. For okay. yeah, for the Pac-Man forty, um, as did some Papalooza for Pokey. Um, the two of them were like uh, magic. Yeah, <laughs> they're so good. Yeah, so I just did sounds. I mean, he took Bentley Bear. I was just doing sounds on the keyboard and then trying to convert them to data, Pokey data. He <laughs> <laughs> that one, yeah. Well, he went to took it to another level. With the yeah. sounds in that game, so that was that was amazing. But um, and, yes, and being, more. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, and and being a musician yourself, um, do you, have you composed music uh, for? I guess a lot of them are ports. So, do you see yourself composing music for any future games? 
Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I, only because it, it's just it, it's a different frame of mind for me. If, when I'm writing a song, it's it's it, you know it's, it's different. I'm doing the different parts of the drums, the guitar, or whatever. But um, right. But when I'm doing a game, it's just it's a whole different frame of mind for me. So I probably not. So you'd probably leave it to one of the experts. Yes. Synth, synth pop loser or TP. Yeah. I hate doing the, the sound. The sound oh, always the thing I leave for last because I hate doing them. <laughs> yeah. But do, you you normally do your own graphics, though, right? Most, or you convert the graphics from the arcade. Yeah, for the most part. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I, cause I think I saw that Pac, Pac-Man Red did some of your graphics on one game and, and some various other people have done graphics for you. I'm sorry. He, he did the ones for uh, uh, Bentley Bear. Um, yes. Yeah, so that, yeah, that was amazing to do also. And all these people are so wonderful. They're so good at what they do. Oh, yeah. It, and it's a great community because everybody wants to contribute to everybody's game because, you know, they, they benefit. They get to see their graphics in a game. You know, maybe they can't make games, but they can make graphics. And if they contribute graphics, they get to see it in the game. And then everybody gets to play this game. So it's 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 really, really wonderful community to be, to be part of. Yes, it is. Um, uh, Neo Media asks, will you consider other arcade games like Donkey Kong or Congo Bongo, which some people are already developing Congo Bongo, but uh, uh, better yet, is there another game besides Pac-Man that you would like to port to the 7800? I mean, you develop all games, a lot of games all the time, but, yes, and that's probably the most asked question ever of developers. <laughs> what's your, what's your next game? What's the game you'd like to do? But it, is there a, a a white whale of a game that maybe is slightly beyond your reach that you would like to do that's a challenge absolutely sinistar sinistar well that that would be amazing and i'm sure there'd be a ton of people clamoring for that especially with the the voice yes uh that that's in sinistar yeah. and would you use uh digital samples or the atari box or whatever works the best that one you'd probably have to use the atari box for because it needs to be, you need to hear it as you're playing. You can't stop that action and say, right. you know, I hunger or and just, <laughs> and you on. No, it's, it's just, no. You need to be able to do that same thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next Pac Man game, <laughs> <laughs> which there are many, many, many. Um, Casey Munchkin, I actually included in the Pac Man games because it's a maze type game. So let's load that up. And this is, uh, <laughs> I'll probably unplug that. It's no use <laughs> right now. So Casey Munchkin, is that, that's another Odyssey game? Yeah, uh, if I'm game, yeah. Correct? Yeah. And um, Ed, you probably had Casey Munchkin on, on your Odyssey when you had it uh, yeah. with your affinity for Pac-Man games? Actually, my best friend had the Odyssey and, and we played it at his house. And, but yeah, Pac yeah, that one and Pickaxe Pete are my two favorite Odyssey two games. Yeah, I, th I think that's how it normally was. Like you, one, one person had one console, your friend had another console, and the rich kid down the block had the expensive console. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing with the Pac-Man games? Oh, good. Yeah. I don't know what this is about with the question marks. Though. <laughs> I, uh, admittedly, I have not played this very much. Uh, that's for sure. That was that. And uh, oh, sorry, I was going to answer. And, and the graphics look like it's uh, way better than what an Odyssey would output. So where did these graphics come from? Was this originally an arcade game? No, um, no. The, who? Oh, uh, forgive me, and I'm so sorry. I can't remember who updated the graphics. Um, I I can't at the moment. Uh, okay. look at the graphics, but you know who you are. <laughs> the, the Odyssey two graphics are in that game. Um, okay, they're like an Easter egg kind of thing. Oh, nice! That's very very clever. Yeah, it's nice to include those little uh, throwbacks and and fun things like that. Somebody said Tanya, master junior black man player. Were you doing pretty good at that? No, but I he was moving watching. really fast, which was really <laughs> awesome because you could kind of fly through. Uh, let's see. 
Um, okay, so let's move on to Pac-Man Collection right now. So you don't get much time. Well, I... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, especially when you're starting and I'm not sure I'm not really sure what I'm just gonna eat the pellets and we'll see what happens so, <laughs> I don't know that game no not that one. Oh my god the eight characters are terrible <laughs> ready Oh, we're going to play Pac-Man XM. I don't know where Pac-Man Collection is. Um, we'll find it after. Yeah. You guys froze up again. Oh, there it goes. Oh, good. We're just uh, being very still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll probably just power through the rest of these. So you did Pac-Man Collection, Ms. Pac-Man Twin. Actually, we should show that one. Um, because you did make some progress on that, and that's... That's a game I've never heard of. Where where does Miss Pac-Man Twin come from? Is it an arcade game? Yes, it was uh, 1993, I think. It was a uh, wow. It was a specialized arcade game, only released in, in uh, I forget the country. God, I'm getting everything. Like, uh, only released in the <laughs> country, and it was a uh, it was a hack, um, and it was it took a long time for it to be dumped, and it could oh, okay. years ago I think they did that, and it just got dumped now. <laughs> So wow, yeah. wow! So that'll make it a lot easier than to uh, recreate it instead of uh, screenshots and shaky video yeah. from arcade. And that was all I had to go by, yeah. <laughs> and and memorizing like oh the pattern like oh how does it work and kind of recreating it almost from memory. Yeah. So let me load that up so people can see it. Now this one I, I would r really be inter interested in playing because uh, it's it can be played as a two-player game, right? Or against the computer. Because this one, uh, where's that high-pitched whining coming from? Yeah, that oh, just started with the game. It's from the game system. It's like locked on a sound. One second. See if I can reset that sound. It might be from some XM sound or something. Hubert, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when you turn off uh, a system uh, in the middle of playing oh. a sound. <laughs> it doesn't stop the sound. It just keeps on playing it. It's very happy to play the sound yeah. forever. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's loading. Struggling. Vanessa. There we go. No sound. Good. Without the high pitched whining. <laughs> Work around. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh, I supposed to ask uh, talk about your 2600 Defender Arcade D make from Atari Stargate uh, Defender 2. Yeah, so I didn't uh, actually cover that. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, I, I wanted to see, being that Stargate was so good on the 2600, I just wanted to see if we can get an actual Defender. I figured it, just, it would be just taking away the Stargate itself and some of the enemies and the special waves. So that was basically what I did for that one. Um, and I had some help from Supercat um, back, back then. Yeah, and that one's available in the Atari Age store as well, so people can can buy that one. Yeah. What is happening? I died, but I, I thought I was going to respawn, <laughs> so I wasn't looking for oh. myself. <laughs> okay. It's like, what, what's going on? Yeah, it plays a little bit different, especially it with the definitely with, does. when you eat a ghost, it just keeps on going. You're expecting that freeze moment to happen, but that wouldn't make sense in a two-player game. Like, you wouldn't want to be freezing weirdly. Yeah. Yeah. But it, uh, that, that it's really cool. No, that makes so much sense why they did that. That, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, because it would just be like, what, what, why am I freezing? Oh, the other person got a ghost. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and you also did a uh, clean sweep as well. Not, uh, you didn't finish it, but uh, you started on clean sweep. Um, and that I know from the Vectrex. Yeah. And is it, is it from the Vectrex? Like that's where it comes from? Oh my God. Okay. So it was their Pac-Man clone that you're now yeah. taking over to the 7800. I should finish that. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I was, my brother had the Vectrex. So that was how I got, you know, that one. So I, yeah. it, it, I, I liked that game because you have to, you had to stop and empty what you picked up every once in a while right you get you get full of pellets <laughs> yeah a unique uh yeah if you're gonna make a clone uh or uh your own version why not change it up a little bit yeah. and make it a little bit different and a little bit more fun um so let's actually go next to baby pac-man okay. because that one is incredibly unique um Somebody asked what my the most challenging. I think I saw this question somewhere. What the most challenging game uh, was for me to make? That would be it. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't have it. So we're gonna open it up. We're gonna open up my baby Pac-Man box here. Bob just said that uh, of all his games that he found the most challenging to make, this was this was it. Well, I assume you meant Baby Pac-Man and not uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Ms. last one. Pac-Man Twin. Yeah. Well, I can understand why. Like, we played this in uh, an arcade in Portland. In Portland, yeah, because they um, had the arcade machine. And it was so hard. <laughs> it was so challenging. Especially when you got to the pinball part. Because yes. you couldn't even keep it in there for any length of time. Because yeah. the paddles are so far apart from each other. It's like, oh, no chance whatsoever. I think the one in Portland, that the white flipper was broken, wasn't it? For a while? Um, we played I, it at the, which arcade? What is, what is it called? Um, I can't remember. Like the, the arcade that's in Portland. Big well-known. Oh, not but the, I think the, that's... Okay. Not the one actually at PRG. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but no, but I think they supplied the... Um, oh, maybe they did. The yeah. games. Uh, and yeah, the arcade itself, I think it, that, that machine was working and not working throughout the show. Oh, yeah. It kept breaking down. But, yeah, I think yeah. we did see it at, tried to play it and it's like it had a sign it on it. It a sign on yeah. it, yeah. Um, so it, maybe, oh, it's, there, there you go. lots of thanks there. So yeah. you probably got a lot of help with this one, I'm, I'm guessing, because it was so different. Yeah. Um, so what, what kind of challenges did you have with this game that did make it hard to make? Mostly the pinball part. Um, I had actually physics. dropped it. Huh? Uh, the physics in it, yeah. or yeah, I had actually dropped it a couple times, and because I just I couldn't wrap my head around the pinball physics part. Um, Kurt, I did. Kurt Wool Woolish. Forgive me if I'm, uh, if I'm saying the name wrong, but yeah, I've never said it out loud either. <laughs> um, <laughs> He, he he stepped up and he did an amazing amazing job with the pinball physics on that. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. And in fact, he he was so nice. He he was nice enough to comment everything he did in the pinball set oh. for me in the, in the code. So I nice. try to understand it. Well, I, I haven't I haven't even read it yet, but I will because I want to know. <laughs> but I want to know what's, what, how that works. Um, yeah. To, my my biggest points were the curve part, and I couldn't. How you get the oh. ball to bounce through the curves and get yeah, but um, right, but yeah, that that I got frustrated at that point in the middle of that. You see the thread, I I got quite frustrated. Yeah, and I dropped it. But sometimes. Yeah, and and I and I've I've seen that from developers from time to time in in the Atari Age forums where they'll, they'll stop a game and for sometimes a decade, and then they'll pick it up again and finish it off. And uh, yeah, it, it it definitely can be frustrating, but it's really nice when the, when the yeah it goes right back down when the when the community is there to help to help out and to contribute code or to help you with a, a frustrating part that you need to get past. Um, so, are you are are you decent at this game? Because I am terrible at this game. It's so difficult. This one I've gotten a little better at. Yeah, 
I, I, yeah. I, I've seen some tricks that people do on the arcade game that actually work on this one too. Um, yeah. Like for instance, just a, just a quick, on the first maze, just under the side doors, there's a corridor. If you can yeah. just shoot up there really quick, the monsters will go out the side door and oh, okay. stay in that corner, like under the under the side door. And then you can come out and go around and stuff like that. And that works on there too. I'm surprised it did. Um, which brings me to a question of uh, arcade accuracy when you're making a game. Um, so our, when you're making these games, do you look at arcade code? Do you do dumps of the arcade code? Or do you analyze play playthroughs? Or do you play it yourself? Or do you refer to... I know you're very open with your, your work in progresses and posting them. Or do you refer to like the crowdsourcing of people saying, oh, that's not really how it works. This is the better way. So how do, how do you determine what is the best way to do it or arcade accurate? Um, all of the above. Um, I, yeah. uh, I've looked at code. I um, tried to figure out, because I didn't know the 80 code very well until like the Galaxia, and I kind of learned it by doing that. But... Um, but yeah, I play it myself. I, I ask people. I uh, just try to uh, try to look for patterns or anything like that. Sometimes I even, I even contacted, like in the case of Frenzy and Space Duel, I contacted the arcade authors, and they gave me. Wow. Yeah, they were nice enough to help me. Um, help me wow. tell me what they did. <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah. You know, you've got it. You got the right uh, code when you've got it. Got it from the original source. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh, that's great. Um, and, and you're probably one of the more open developers in terms of letting people access uh, your works in progress and even the final builds of your games. You usually post the final builds or very close to the final builds. Um, so what is, what is your thinking behind being so open and being just like, here's my games, uh, uh, play them? Because you do sell them, like they are in the Atari age stores and, and the Atari Age Store. Do you find how, how does that work out for you? I guess. I guess That's the it, question. Because I don't do it, I just do it because I love doing it. I don't really care. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I just, if it sells, it sells. If not, all right. I, I'm not. I'm not doing it for that. I, I just. Um, yeah. I. 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 I don't. I don't think about it too. Much. I like. I like the feedback, and the feedback always helps make a better game, um, and. If they want to put it on a multi cart and play it, fine. You know, that's. Yeah. That's that's the. Because really. I know there's a lot of discussion lately, people asking. Oh, can I buy the ROM? Can I can I get the final ROM of certain of certain games? And you'd probably be the best test case for. Does. The ROM being out there affect sales? or affect people's desire to have an actual boxed box game and i know it doesn't affect me whether i buy whether the roms out there if i buy a box game or not because i i like the physicality and i think most of the consumers of these games are nostalgic for the the physical cartridge and the box and the manual and everything that comes along with it um so and that's how I am. Yeah, and I and I think that's that's mostly the feeling for most of the people, and and I, I don't know how how it is for the crowd out there, but we can only speak from our own experience. Thank you. It's it, it, it's been very it's been very positive. It has helped. I, I there's still been a lot of sales, a lot. Thank yeah. you. But uh, yeah. So I don't think it. I, don't, I think if anything, it helps. Um, yeah, I might get the word out more because you know people people would download say Galaxian and f see how great of a conversion it is, and then go, well, I actually want this on cartridge. I want the manual. I want the the nice box to display on my shelf in my room or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those uh, colorful boxes behind you all seem to be about the same height. Yeah. Those are those are the games that I've done. Those, those are mine. The ones on the behind me up here, are oh. the OG games. Nice. Yes. Yeah. That's a huge, huge number of games. I think your games 
your 7800 collection make up 50% or more of the Atari Age store. I didn't count it officially, but just, you know, clicking through it, I, I think it does, because you put out like two or three a year. Where, where do you find the time and or the inspiration <laughs> to be able to do all this programming? Or, because you're just like as prolific as like John Shampoo on the 2600 side, just cranking, cranking out the games. Are you are you a fast programmer? Uh, it depends on the game. I, I there was a couple of years where I was doing two or three a year. Um, then I slowed down for a bit, and now I'm starting to pick up again. Um, it just sometimes I'll get I'll start on another one while I'm working on one. Um, so I just end that pick up where I left off. Um, for the other one, so that's that, I've done that a couple times. There was only one case that I'm trying to beat my record. There was one case where I, it took me from beginning to end a month. Um, yes. That was the, I think it was Uniwars that you were trying to get it under a month. Well, was Glax, it? Glaxian was because I was Glaxian because okay. it started out as a as a code taken from the wars, but uh, right. Um, Astro, you're almost there. You almost got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't two months, <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> But Astro Fighter was uh, was my month month game. Mm. Oh, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna go into um, some of your early seventy eight hundred games. Um, Asteroids and Asteroids Deluxe. That's the exact one you're talking about. So let's move over to that. How are you doing? Good. Having fun? Mm -hmm. Playing games? Oh yeah. People, people <laughs> during these um, interviews, people are like, "Is Tanya okay?" She's, <laughs> she's not saying anything. No. Um, she's I'm just playing. playing. <laughs> I feel bad for her. No, she no. likes. <laughs> You like playing the games. This is great. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't have to put any thought into it. He does all it. the talking. I play all the games. It's all good. <laughs> so this, uh, was this, by, by date, from what I have it, this is your first uh, finished 7800 game that came out on in boxed form? I believe so. Um, yeah. Astro Asteroids Deluxe and Space Duel were heavy hacks of, of Asteroids because I had the source code from Kurt. Um, okay. Yeah, so those are more, those two, I was still feeling my way around then, um, and trying to, to see what I could do. That's why, and I know I've been being for this, but Space Duel doesn't have a tethering mode. Uh, right. Yeah, I think I read the thread there, and you're like, I'm really sorry, I don't want to disappoint people, but... I don't have the tether mode. I can't put it in. I didn't know how to do it. I seriously did not know how to do it. But Owen Rubin, when I contacted him, said he would he was he would look for the his source listing, and he, would, he never did find it. But uh, oh no! Well, you can always do a, a te <laughs> the tether version later on yeah. if that ever comes up. <laughs> yeah, make make a three yeah. twenty more version. Make them try to get a little more resolution out of it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, and uh, and then you moved to Space Duel as, as well. Um, so was was this your first physical cartridge that was released that you uh, that you ever did? Um, at least to the Atari Age store, possibly. But was it the first ever game that you actually physically held in your hand on cartridge that you did? <laughs> <laughs> Too many games, <laughs> but it, uh, uh, it probably was one of the one of the early. probably was around. Yeah, it had to be if, if not the first it was around there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's let's uh, move on to Space Duel. <coughs> oh no! Sorry, just went went down the wrong way. Well, that's good. <coughs> Better than the alternative. What that I have COVID? Yes. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Mm -mm. So, now 
a space duel I am not familiar with. Um, <laughs> it's uh, maybe you could tell a little bit of the history of, of space duel. It's, a, it's an arcade game. Yes, it's an arcade game. It was the third. There was there was asteroid asteroid bullets and then space duel. Um, vector games. Yeah, there was a vector game. It was color vector. That was the difference. Um, ah, like Tempest, yeah. But um, yeah. And I, I, I liked you had two player simultaneous mode in, in the arcade. You know, you had that. Um, and I liked the different shapes of, like, every screen was a different shape, uh, asteroid, so to speak. Um, yeah. And what I did when I was doing that, I took screenshots of the regular, of the arcade game and brought the resolution down to six, uh, 12 by 16 or whatever, the, whatever it was. So, so they look, I, those are like the diamond ones, the second screen, the, the ones that are diamond are actually, right. yeah, are actually the arcade uh, shapes scaled down to 12 by 16 or whatever. They, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah the, the rotating colored cubes. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the 7800 doesn't do vector based yeah. things. So, how many frames of animation uh, are there, or is it a color cycling thing on on those uh, kind of triangle? Uh, a little of both. It, it, I forgot how many. There were like twelve or sixteen different you know, rotate, rotating uh, shapes, uh, rotating pieces to the you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you fighting all that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because when when you're trying to convert a, a vector based game over to a raster system, uh, you have to if you have a rotating ship, you have to think about how many uh, uh, different positions do I really want to program this game for? Um, obviously eight, but do I want to double that or maybe make it uh, twelve around? Because uh, yeah, it's it's I guess it's really all about memory space. And uh, you get uh, quite a bit more in the 7800 than the 2600. So it's not as precious, but you still have to keep that in mind, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you do. Um, Atari, I noticed that GC3, Atari, whatever, whatever you work in the game, liked 24 a lot. They did a lot of 24. asteroids as they ship. They took 24 different rotations. And mm -hmm. there was another one that had 24 different ones as well. So they used 24. Yeah. Uh, you have a, a little screen display behind you, and uh, it's uh, it's running uh, some some Pac-Man right now. And I saw it was running uh, a Galaxian before. What is what is that going on there? Is it just rotating through your games? No, I just while you were up, I switched it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, tricky. Nice. You got a little distraction in the background. Um, so now we're going to move on to. Uh, Diff what do I have? No, 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 not yet. Not yet. So many games. Oh my god. <laughs> um Where are my notes of your early games? Oh nope. Done the early games. So we're gonna move on to some of your regular non Pac-Man games that you made. Uh, Failsafe in 2010. Oh, just gonna unplug that. I'll do that next time if I remember. <laughs> it's it's actually good to let me know that I have actually pressed power to have that uh, Atari box going. Um, so. What's up? Uh, yeah, I'm unfamiliar with this game as well. Um, what is the history of this game? Is it? On the 50... Oh, I think I've I'm sorry? seen this somewhere. Uh, on the 5200, there was a game called Countermeasure, which happens to be my favorite game on the 5200. Uh, oh, okay. And I wanted to do a. I like doing like part twos of things, you know, or <laughs> of, uh, yeah, and, or updates, you know, too. So. I figured I would I would kind of do a part two to countermeasure and, and put it on seven eight hundred. So uh, countermeasure was a, a thinking game. It was more 
it was a little action, but it, it, it wasn't a quick pickup play to download. So this is right. same, along the same lines. It's you need some time for that for this game. A um, little bit of strategy, yeah, and a little bit of action. That's that's some of the games that I I like as as well, where there's a nice balance between them, where it's not just straight out shoot everything on the screen, but you have to you have to slow down a little bit. Not all strategy, but it's uh, yeah, this looks it's really good. So this is is this kind of like you said it was a sequel. So does it uh, what does it what new things do you have in this? New enemies, new drains, new um, it kind of, the, the the goal is kind of different in this one. The goal is just to right. get all the the uh, uh, values of the code of uh, the of the code to disarm the um, silo at the end. The goal is to get to the end with all the with all the numbers to the code, disarm it, and you're done. You know, and, and you're done with okay. that. But then it gets harder. But but yeah, that's that's the the goal. The goal. That's the difference. Yeah. Oh, somebody said, "Oh my God, was Failsafe really from 2010?" Uh oh, people. We're reminding how old people are now. <laughs> how much time has passed? <laughs> oh my, the store. This store is going to be my new addiction. Um, so people, it's great that people are rediscovering your games now. Um, from from going through them, I, I love that when that happens. So let's go to the next uh, game called uh, Pinout. Oh. <laughs> Oh, he made a face. Uh -oh. <laughs> it may not be as far ahead as I think. It isn't done. Oh, I don't have it, so we're going to skip that one. I don't think this exists. Because there, there were a number of, of games that you um, had started but had not uh, progressed enough to, to post, uh, post a... Uh, oh. Yeah, that, that's, that one was never finished. Um, right. I actually turned into uh, Crazy Bricks, believe it or not. Oh, okay. And we'll get to Crazy Bricks in, in a bit as well. Yeah. So, I, um, so this is Moon Cresta, which is, uh, which is an excellent shooter game, a fixed, fixed shooter, which I had never played before either. So the, all, these, all these games are, are showing me arcade games that I've never played before. And that's uh, one of the great things about doing the show is discovering these, you know, you know, not overly popular, but not obscure games. Like they're, they're, they're not the things you see all the time, like Galaga and Galaxian, but they're a little bit off the beaten path. And, uh, it's, and some of them are like gems, like amazing, amazing games. And so when I go back to PR, when we go back to PRG, it's like, Oh, here's here's the our arcade cabinet. Um, so maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, a Moon Cresta. I played Moon Cresta a little bit back in the day. They were you found places where they where they had that game. The but the sole reason for me porting that was Gambler 172 Walter on the Atari age. He, oh yeah, he's a friend of mine. He kept. Same. When are you gonna make Moon Cresta? When are you gonna make Moon Cresta? I'm like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Peer pressure. Yeah, peer pressure. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh, that's bad. Oh, you can. Oh. oh. No. Okay. No. Bob he's... has died. He's. What's going on? Uh, the computer turned off. One second, folks. We'll be back on. He's frozen, oh. though. Yeah, cause it'll mm -hmm. cut out. Our computer, we're getting a power, new power supply for the computer. And, uh, I think we're doing pretty good here. Should be coming any day now. So, Bob, if you're listening to the stream, oh my god. Um, we are rebooting the computer mm. and getting you back. At least he's frozen in a happy state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went out happy. Yeah. You know? Uh... Come on, computer. Oh, no. Are we going to have to do part two at a later date? Oh, we'll get it back. Like the power supply seems to be good. I think it's the connection. These games will make me happy. <laughs> 
<laughs> These games make me happy. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. No. Fully dead. You want my um, tablet? That's not gonna help. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh... You can't get output from that. Oh boy. I'm guessing you can't put him through uh, the computer. That's... Pushing it? Challenging. <laughs> Audio-wise. Um, we wouldn't be able to no, see him properly. You just properly. keep put it, pushing it on. That's not going to... Yeah, that's not turning on. I think it's finally, finally died. What options do we have? What options do we have? Um, <laughs> hold on, Bob. We could put him through that, but we wouldn't be able to look at him well, or that's see okay. him, which is well, fine. You would see him in the stream, though, wouldn't you? Maybe. Let me try. Okay. All right. One second, people. Time to hack. <laughs> well, in the interim, I'm going to play some Moon Cresta. Yep. Uh, oh my, oh my. Yeah, gonna have to. Reboot and start a new stream in ten minutes. <laughs> um. Oh, this might... Cause problems? No, we might be able to do it. I suppose worse comes to worse, you could keep his happy face on the screen, and then he can <laughs> chat in the background. Maybe you can get the audio coming through. That would be funny. Okay, oh. so I, I, we do have him back. <laughs> You may not be able to hear us yet. That's the thing. So, let me transfer the webcam over there so he can hear us. This should work. One second, Bob. One second. Oh, he hears you. Is okay, it coming through the now camera? Now he should see us. And now he should hear us. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Okay, step one. <laughs> step one, we have Bob. <laughs> step two, we get you to see and hear Bob. You can put that back on the monitor, possibly, or does it yeah, reach? No? Know. All right, forget it. He can see us. It's just going to be a weird <laughs> angle for him. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, now, one second. Um, okay. Fun, 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 fun. Keep playing. Entertain them. <laughs> <laughs> Do what I can. Oh, it's so pretty. Um. These are a bit like flying sea anemones. The bad guys in this game. Ah! Oh, the computer just rebooted. It's oh. bizarre, isn't it? Well, it's maybe good. I don't know. Okay, I've almost got you, Bob. At least you're bigger. your visuals now. Excellent. And now I have to get your audio. Okay. If you are able to say something now. Oh, I think that's you. Okay. Can you hear him? Me? Yeah. You can hear him? Uh, yeah, a little bit. 
Oh, it's yeah. quiet though, but yeah. No? Weird, a little. Oh, I know what. Okay. They can probably hear you, but we can't. Oh. Oh, oh no, I can. Okay. Oh. Yeah. That's what I said. I don't know if I should be talking or not. I should just wait. That's gonna be a problem. Why are you so quiet? Is it just the uh, volume on the app itself? Or? Okay. Say something again, Bob. Um, this is the test. <laughs> <laughs> um, check. Okay, you're so quiet to us. Oh my god. I can hear it a bit better. Can you? Yeah, I think so. You wanna switch? Sure, if you want to. Okay. You can see. <laughs> I blame Rune Cresta. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess my, don't mess with my game. Okay, say something again. Okay. Uh, oh my it... god, I can hear you really well through. Yeah, Tanya's I, I headphones. think it's. I Weird. think the headphones are a little off. So. Okay. Good. We're back. Hallelujah. Hopefully this is all good for everyone. Sounds fine on this end. Excellent. Huh. Huh. Okay. It's weird for us, but it's normal for everyone out there, which is what matters. Okay, so uh, they've seen enough mood, Cresta. We're going to move on to Meteor Shower now. I love that Galaga pillow. Another one I am unfamiliar with. Um, I'm guessing uh, another arcade conversion. Actually, no. That one was an Intellivision version. Oh, right, yes, yes. Just Ast massively upgraded. <laughs> yep, yeah, Astro Smash. Astro I actually I found pictures of rocks online and I, I, I did another reduce resolution. <laughs> oh, did you? So is, there's an option in here to uh, go back to the original Intellivision looking? Oh, no, no. That Okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a mistake in that game, though, um, that I completely forgot about. You have. Uh oh. Oh, you had a, you had a puzzle looking because I don't know. If it's oh no no, that. it's all good. It's all good. Uh, you have a, a, the option for hyperspace back on the joystick, but I never put the sound in for it. Oh. So it has to be used. <laughs> oh well, it could be worse. Could be hyperspace not working. <laughs> That's, that's excellent. Uh, Neo Media says it's nice. I love Astro Smash. Um, yeah, there are some paddle versions of some of your games. We're playing all joystick versions just to keep it simple so we don't have to you know, go back and forth between paddles and joysticks. So there are some of these games that uh, work with paddles. Is this one of the paddle uh, optional games? Oh, I don't know why they brought that up there. <laughs> the 2600 version you can use paddles oh okay because that would change the game completely be able to zip around super super fast um debro asks um he said i would like to hear your hurdles in learning the 7800 the different graphic modes and display lists can you talk about the challenges of thinking different in this area um, well, thinking different, I had nothing to compare it to, so that was my first foray into in programming that. Um, the uh, hurdles were the, were the display modes and understanding display lists. Um, what are display lists? I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that. Display lists are a list of what... How do I explain that? This, display lists are, are, is a list of what it can exist in that particular zone. The screen is broken up into zones. Okay. And this playlist contains anything that can, that can be in that zone, either a, a bunch of tiles, um, uh, sprites, or both. Um, and you have a bunch of those for every zone. It usually, usually, a zone is eight, between eight scale lines and 16 scale lines. Um, okay. You have it broken up into that many uh, on the whole screen. And, and are you able to make it like multiples of eight or you have to define each eight and each 16? 
you have to find each in 16. And they can, one can be seven, one can be uh, 13, one can be, I mean, you don't have to, but um, it's easier to keep them in, in multiples of eight or 16. Okay, yeah, yeah. That makes so, sense. Anyway. Um, and uh, at a follow-up to that one from Debro as well, uh, have you learned more efficient ways of constructing display lists over time? And could you talk about the evolution? Obviously, these are very more advanced, uh, you know, technical kind of questions. But uh, a lot of our crowd are the developers <laughs> in the Atari Age forums. Yeah, um, there there are a couple. I found that there are a couple of ways, depending on the number of sprites in the game and, and the application. You can have a pre-built display list and just update what's in it, or you can build it on the fly. Um, okay. it, it, each frame. Um, and depending on, I'm trying to think of a game where I build on the fly. I know there is one or two, and I can't think of all of them off the top of my head. But most of the time, if the sprites are always going to be on the screen, like Pac-Man, for instance, they're almost always going to be on the screen all the time. You may, like the player may be moved off screen when he dies, but he comes right back. So stuff like that, you want to keep the five players in every zone, but just update their position and stuff like that. It's faster. Okay. So, so let's uh, let's move on to the next game, uh, which is uh, uh, Scramble from 2012. And this one was from 2012 as well. That cat wants to go. No, he's. Adding yes, complexity. that's what the you know, cats are for. <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting. Uh, he, <laughs> he came in and immediately made a beeline. I know, to for the, the HDMI cord. cable, yeah. and now he's chewing on this. No. I, I think he has to go. No, he's <laughs> no. fine. <laughs> he's fine. Oh, you don't have. I don't know which one is which now. Every time. Um, so scramble, which uh, was done uh, amazingly on the twenty six hundred as well. Um, so another another shooter, but horizontal shooter. Um, so is this another arcade game that you? Uh, love to play, or did somebody course you into this one? Yeah. No, I, that was one of the ones I liked back, back then. Yeah, yeah. And, um, that was another one where I scoured the the ROM for information, and I found the layout of the terrain. Oh, that that would be really important, especially in this game, because it's a like it's a huge, huge map of many yeah. levels, right? And then I got it. I got it from there. So that layout is exactly what was in the arc, arcade ROM. Oh, nice. And and most of the games that you do develop, are they games that you yourself enjoy playing or have fond memories of playing? Uh, or what is the percentage of coerced games, and like requests, let's say, let's call them, versus games that you wanted to make? Um, most of them are games that I wanted to make. The, the one that was one of course from, from Jim, the 172, was, was one that I played anyway. So it's like, okay, yeah, yeah I'll do it. <laughs> so. And, and um, along with Scramble on the 2600, Super Cobra was made as well, which is a very, very similar game. Did you ever think about um, converting what you've done here into Super Cobra? Um, somebody already hacked it into Super Cobra. Oh. Okay. The, difference in, um, and the reason why I didn't do Super Cobra myself was for one reason, the moving tanks. Um, there's, there are tanks in that game that move along the terrain, oh, and okay. I'm, I'm like, that's what I do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, nah, leave it to yeah. somebody else. <laughs> um, Deborah asked, have you done development for the NES as well? Or, to expand on that, other game systems, like other 6502 systems? Yes, I did. I did do um, a couple of games for the NES. Um, this is one of Rainbow Bright. Ah, okay. Yep. And actually, the other one I ported Frenzy over. That was, this was my test. I ported Frenzy over to the NES, and I actually got it signed by Doug Stern, which is cool. Oh, wow. Very, very nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was those were the two games I've done on the, uh, the NES. Excellent. Um, so let's go and move on to. Oh my God! I don't know how we're going to get through all these games. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to move on to uh, Rip Off. One second. That's all you get. Ah, it's 
scramble so good. Yeah, scramble is is a lot of fun. It's super hard. I think I made it fairly far in the twenty six hundred version. Uh, Cafe Man Two D. I have that question later on. Um, oh, I, I generally if somebody's asking questions about IP and permission, and I generally just avoid those questions because it's there's no good answers for that <laughs> really. So rip rip off. Um, that I know from the Vectrex as well, and but it's originally an arcade game, correct? It's a very strange name for a game. <laughs> uh, so did this come from you playing it on your uh, brother's Vectrex or from the arcade? Oh, um, I, I, I knew from the arcade first and then sort of Vectrex. Um, and yeah, um, that's that's another one, the Vectrex. Uh, Defender 2600, did he do the graphics? I think it was him that helped me with the graphics on that. Mm. Um, made different um, different uh, tank shapes. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was that was a fun one. Yeah. yeah. I even put the flicker in it from the. From the uh, oh yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. The, the vector graphics. There, yeah, too. and and some people on the twenty six hundred have done that kind of effect as well. Really nice, uh, like really strong edges and and uh, putting flicker in, so it looks like vector uh, base drawings. Um, so Debro asks, uh, this kind of goes back to uh, sound chips as well. Are you and others carrying on with Kurt's vision of the XM? Are you still considering XM as a target platform? Because I'm not sure, obviously you would know better than me, because I, I, I try and understand what the XM was about. And uh, there's a lot of threads and just huge, huge threads about it. And from what I understand, it was something, a hardware module that Kurt was working on. And it was being developed over many, many years, but was not finished, and obviously won't be finished in its current incarnation. But um, maybe you could talk a little bit more about that and how the dragonfly changes, if it does change anything. Uh, yeah, it probably does. The, um, the, the, the XM was going to be basically a one-stop shop of, of having your extra memory, your Pokey, your, your Yamaha, um, and your high score cart all, all in one without instead of putting it in every cart you just have it in one place plug the card in this way i mean it's it's very efficient um yeah very very smart way of doing things where it's it was it was a module that goes in between the cartridge and the console yeah. so that you didn't have to duplicate effort every time uh, you made a game. It would just be an extra add-on that you could take advantage of. Yeah, and it was it was going to sit just sit on top, and that would have been. It's even got ports for um, eight-bit peripherals in the back. Um, oh wow! Yeah. Um, and, and I and I know the Dragonfly developer was just recently in the past couple of weeks was talking about making a pass-through type of uh, module very similar to the XM not doesn't have all the same options but is very very similar yeah I, I, I saw that he was especially for the uh, Yamaha you know, like you said for the Yamaha yeah thing. because I, you know if you're developing all these games with Pokey and Yamaha abilities and you're going to be having to or wanting to sell the games say in the Atari H store or wherever you want to sell them uh, you're going to have to put a chip, either a pokey chip or a hokey chip or whatever is available at the time, or a Yamaha chip in each and every cartridge, which increases the price. Um, so an XM module or something like that would be, the, the cat has to go, he's chewing on the cable immediately. <laughs> Get out of here! Um, so making that add-on module um, like the Dragonfly developer is is thinking of, it's going to be a great solution for that. Yeah. And I guess yeah. it all depends on adoption. How many people are going to be making these games with the Yamaha chip and the and the Pokey chip? I know Pokey has a lot more uh, uh, 
you know, uh, ex acceptance, I guess, because it's been around a long time. Yeah. yeah that's, that's probably, yeah. If, um, it, it makes so much more, I mean, because they, they're getting spent in the tokens. I mean, because they're, they're putting nothing to map with. So if you get one per person instead of every game per person, you, it, it's more, so much more safe. Yeah, yeah, and I and I know that the, the proposed hokey chip uh, is supposedly ten dollars each, but it's, it's still a ten dollar add on, or more, uh, if it's marked up for every single game. Um, would it, would a good solution be a TIA fallback for every game, so that if you don't have the module, or you don't want to have, you know, pay for the extra chip on board? to have still all the sounds for the game or some of the sounds or you know a, a decent replica of the sounds is that something I, you plan on i think so i i tried to do that i did that with um, uh pac-man collection 40th anniversary if, it, if the yamaha is not there we'll go, you know, use the that's right it um, even changes the the title screen whether depending on whether it detects it or not pretty cool um thank you for noticing me. yeah um <laughs> Yeah, I, I couldn't do it with Bentley there because I was already using so much space for the you know, for the levels and, and the actual music itself. So I, I wanted to originally there, but I, I couldn't. Uh, yeah. There are actually two versions. There is a Tia version of, of Bentley there. Um, yeah, which I think I have. I don't know why I bought the TIA version. Maybe it was just out at the time. But you bought it, you know, you have the token version. Oh, do I? Okay, good. Excellent. the Tia Oh, okay. So there we go. <laughs> um, so we're going to move on to the next game, uh, Armor Attack 2. You're done. Attack already off flood. Ready. Uh. Oh, RC70 says, oh my god, watching for 20 minutes, just noticed the earrings. Nice. <laughs> um, so Armor Attack 2, where does uh, this game come from? That has the longest history. Um, I started Armor Attack 2 when I started Asteroid Deluxe. Oh, wow. Uh, and then I left it um, for like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so long and developmental time. And I finally, I found it, you know, going through my files one day and going, no, I should finish this. And I, I started to, but it started taking on, it was originally was supposed to be just a port of Armor Attack. Yeah. But then it started taking a life of its own. I said, let me add some more mazes in. Let me add another helicopter in at a certain point. And there's two helicopters in this one at some point. When you oh, get nice. really, um, and I wanted to make it level-based. Like, you, you finish a level and you want to the next level. And, Nice. So, yeah, so it ended up having all that. Um, instead of being trying to make it look vector, I, I uh, made it more uh, rast I rasterized it. Right. So, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks, it looks, it, it, it has a, a very, uh, I don't know, 2600 feel to it. But obviously, it, the helicopter takes it to another level. But I don't know, it just, it, it feels like combat. But uh, combat way way advanced <laughs> um quick note the uh the morse code during the during that is is atari age's uh, url www.atariage.com oh nice yeah you might as well if you're gonna do that kind of thing and have morse code you might as well have it spell out something or if you're gonna do some codes in there I have little uh, little easter eggs for people um so we're going to go to Astro Blaster next. They load up very fast on the Dragonfly. It's very nice. Um, uh, Deborah, asks, Deborah asks a very funny question. When are you going to use your Twitter account? Uh -huh. Because I was trying to tag you in things, and I'm like, ah, he's, he, mm -hmm. I don't know where he is. Uh, I don't, I don't want to know what name he's under. Because there's a lot of, a lot of Robert Decrescenzos, a lot of Bob Decrescenzos online. One's a lawyer or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't um, find you to tag you. So 
I think my Twitter handle is at underscore man underscore plus. I think it's been a long time since I've been on it. Um, but yeah, I don't have to get back on that. <laughs> Not much for social media. No. no. Um, I, I love the um, the add-on of you can't fire too much in this game or you're gonna overheat. That's that's a nice add-on for a for a shooter, and it reminds me a lot of Mega Mania. Is this uh, was Mega Mania a kind of a takeoff of parts of this? Do you know? Uh, uh, yeah, from what I understand, yeah, Mega Mania was the, the kind of their version of Afterburst. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is a coin op, as Ramirez says. Oh wow, look at that! Oh my god, so, so many games I have not played. When I was going through your catalog of games, I mean, other than the Pac-Man's, and even some of the Pac-Man's, I'm like, I have never even heard of this Pac-Man. <laughs> but a, a lot of these games are are not not the 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 ones that people think of, and I think I've said that before. Um, so are. Is that is that something that you go for some more more obscure games? Yeah, like B level games for a B level system. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's uh, that is I I find myself gravitating more to the B level game. Um, <laughs> and that's another one, by the way. I took I, I took the ROM plot to find the enemy movements. All the all the enemy movements are are lower than what in the Oh wow! Wow. So you like to be as accurate as possible um, for your for your games. I know. Talking to John Champo and he, funny enough, everybody uh, says his games are so you know arcade accurate and they have that feel and perfection of what what it feels like to play the arcade game. And I and 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 I agree. And it actually makes me better playing the arcade game. But he uses none of the code. He he doesn't look at any of the code and somehow he's able to capture that and. Um, Awesome. Really and it's and it's absolutely astounding. So, what? How do you find translating the? Uh, I guess you aren't using like the code code, but you're using like the movement code to, to bring over. And and how does the translation work for that? Is it fairly easy? Um, once you find it, it's fairly easy. You just got to really divide the horizontal movement by. <laughs> because that's, that's right yeah the different resolutions right yeah yeah uh so i have just a bunch of i, I divided up all the the feedback from the the community when i put out that you were going to be on the stream between questions game requests <laughs> and and general comments uh so under the game requests which i'm sure you get all the time and even even one of the questions in the in the chat is, from Neo Media is, what games do you plan, have planned for 2021? Um, and uh, some other ones. Das Richter says he needs to do Solar Fox for the 7800. Please, Lord, somebody make a great port of this amazing game. Um, and Jeremy Mishia says SCAA and Frenzy are my personal favorites. Please beg him to do a Phoenix port. Um, and he actually added a question to that, which brings me to the question of what is your main motivating factor when choosing a game to port? Is it uh, based on, you know, just nostalgia or you? is it a challenge, some of the games that you make? It's some nostalgia. It's, it's, I have to at least have an idea of how to do, I would say, half of it. And the other half can be the challenge. Um, but if I, if I don't, know how to do any of it forget it <laughs> and it's too much of a challenge <laughs> yeah. yeah but um it's if it's something i do i basically can do can just know how to do i'll just do i'll just do it like again with astro fighter astro fighters i i looked at it and i said this, this, this should be easy and, and, and that's what i, I took uh, the time to do it right and and uh Crossbow says, uh, Bob will be the one to bring Moon Patrol to the 7800. I'm sure of it, with F FM sound. <laughs> so, constant uh, constant requests. Um, here's some general comments. Um, Thank you for making Asteroids Deluxe, Astro Blaster, Astro Fighter, and Moon Cresta such excellent ports. My sons and I have spent countless hours playing each game, Esther Mirrors 2008 says. 
Uh, Lewis Hill says, Legend is a word often overused, but when it comes to 7800 homebrew, PMP is a true legend. Uh, looking forward to this one. Uh, Debro says, uh, I wanted to take the time to thank you. Thank you for the wonderful 7800 projects you've given us. You have really expanded the 7800 library with quality releases. Also, thank you for sharing your code and experiences with the community. This helps others learn and bring more to the 7800 library in the end. So, um, how much do you release your full code or some code or some code to some games? Uh, what is your, your your thing you do with with your code? I I it was basically full release code um, when I I posted it a while back. Um, I was going or so I thought. Um, so I posted all of my source code. I'm like, everybody, do what you want with it. You know, it'll help. Um, so that's yeah. That, that was what I. Yeah, yeah. Because in um, there was a point in time. Uh, oh, in 2016, where um, you took a break from programming. Um, you posted, I'm kind of burnt on this. Just haven't felt doing it for a while. For quite a few years, I was putting out about two games a year. A year. And um, it, I, a lot of developers seem to run across this after a while. I mean, obviously, when you do it for decades, it's, it's going to happen at some point where you need a break. Um, so what, what brought you back into it? Let's, let's ask that question um, after, after your break. <laughs> um, 2016, 2017 was, was a bad period for me, yeah. but um, it, 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 I, I miss doing it. That's basically what it came down to. I, I, yeah. It's my love. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You, it's just like one of those things in your life you just can't escape. You can't get away from it, no matter what you try to do. It's you, you're just thinking about it all the time, and I have many, many of those things in my life as well. Like. I always have to do something like I'm doing with this show. I'm constantly, uh, oh, thank you, Brainless Angel, for following. Glad you like the show. Um, there's always some yearning to to share with other people. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't make games. I, I try to, but I don't have the time to make it. Make games, or I don't have the priorities to make the games. I have other <laughs> things that take priority. But I, I love sharing other people's passion for making games and uh yeah i i feel that same urge to do something and you know i i, I create music as well and 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 i'm a filmmaker as well so there's there's i think everybody has that in them to to do something to, to create something and they can't they can't help but do it it makes them go crazy if they don't do it I went on your site, by the way. So I watched the trailer of the movie that you did. That was very oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it did really, really well. Uh, yeah, it's on Amazon Prime streaming and got a bunch of awards. So, yeah, it's it's one of my passions is is making films, and uh, yeah, and uh, I, I and I hope everybody can succeed in in reaching their potential in in whatever they uh, they set out to do because it's really satisfying when you can put something out like a game or a movie and people enjoy it and you get that feedback that they're enjoying it so we're going to move on to astro fighter which was made in 2015. Not for that. <laughs> <laughs> fun game ready ready Okay. Another one I am. Oh, it doesn't like blue very well. Very fuzzy. Oh, yeah. Looks better. I've noticed on the screen, that. Actually. So, if I need to clear up noise on the 7800, I'll know to set something to blue because it shows noise so much. This is one I am definitely unfamiliar with completely. Where is this an arcade? Yes, yeah, Sega Data East 1980. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was an arcade game. Um, I it was a there was this deli that had that game in it that I used to play a lot. So yeah, yeah, I remember I remember that game probably. 
Ah, nice. Uh, Estramir says, Astro Fighter is just like the arcade. I used to play this one at a local bar when I was too young to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so he says this is a very, very accurate port. And like the, even the font at the top is really, really reminiscent of old, old, old early arcade games. Yeah, like, I, I used my uh, before the font, I had a couple of books there. Yeah, and I guess it's a little bit easier on the 7800 to be uh, more arcade accurate, obviously, than the 2600, because you would just never be able to get that kind of display on the top of a 2600 game. Um, so that probably makes it a little bit easier to accomplish what you want to do when you port a game um, to the 7800. Was that was that a factor in, in when you wanted to create games, is to get closer to what the arcade uh is in in the games that you're making was that yes. a yeah yeah um so the next one is bentley bears crystal quest which is quite a departure <laughs> from all the other games i think you've ever done it's a platformer um uh, let's load that up So, our, I love platformers, um, and seeing that this is your only platform game that I know of, uh, besides cool. Pickaxe Speed, <laughs> um, um, do you do you like playing platformers, or was this uh, what what? And and this is also a unique game, like this is your game. I mean, it's. Um, kind of an unofficial sequel to Crystal Castles, right? Um, so what was the motivating factor for making this? That started out as me wanting to do like a Pitfall 3. Oh, uh, okay. Believe it or not. Um, and go there was a thread way back when on the Broadway that um, somebody was talking about doing uh, Wonder Boy uh, in something. Oh yeah, very Wonder Boy-ish, yes. Yeah, and and then somebody said, well, we, we should do that, but Atari should have their own because they have their own mascot, which is Bentley Bear, and I went, perfect. <laughs> it's all coming together. Um, yeah, and all came in soon. When I read that, I said, that's exactly what I want to do. And I immediately set to work on it, and I didn't say anything for a while. Um, and I put some mock screenshots up in that thread, but there were actually the... I, I had actually been game running at that point, um, yeah. and, and but it, it started out as a as a, a, a three quarters uh, view. I forgot what the name of that was. Um, isometric. Was Thank you. Yeah. I started out with an isometric view, and I changed it because I didn't like the way it was coming out. Um, so yeah. it was WIP very very early as an isometric view. Oh really? Interesting. Yeah, that would have been very, very different. It, it's probably a way harder to program an isometric view platformer <laughs> because you're probably uh, harkening back to the Crystal Castle's isometric view, right? Yep. Yep. And uh, when Pac-Man Red gave me uh, the, the this forest, that was the first screen he gave me as far as graphics go. The forest, I said, this has to be. Um, uh, parallax scroll. It has to be parallax scroll. Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't know how to do that before then, and I, I made sure I figured it out. <laughs> I can have this screen without parallax scrolling. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't even notice that it had parallax scrolling. That's, I'll have to look. When the trees come in, is that when it. Yeah, it, come, um, the, it doesn't start out that way, but it gets as he gets into the forest deeper, it starts. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, so the next one is Super Circus Atari Age. Sorry, we're getting, we're powering through these. <laughs> no, bad cat. Bad cat. Pixel, you're not usually the trouble cat. <laughs> Cats like cords too much. So we're going to be playing this with a joystick, which is sacrilegious, but, um... <laughs> Um, 
So this this is an interesting choice as well for uh, porting a game. What uh, what made you choose Super Circus? I love that was another one of my favorites on the 2600. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to incorporate some more things, that, uh, um, like the falling things from Arkanoid, you know, the uh, falling pills from the balloons that you pop. And right. Yes. I made the Atari Age logo a boss balloon, so to speak. <laughs> Um, so it, it, that, that only shows up if you have the row, uh, all three rows, um, if you don't refill by row, it refills by the whole screen, that's when you get loaded between levels. Mm. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I, I wanted to do, a, I wanted to do Esper, Esperate, at ES, ESPIR. I'm trying to remember his username. Esperate did the clown graphics. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, they're really, really nice. Blue and white and red. Yeah. And that was that was when I started doing two-player simultaneous modes. In my, in my game. I wanted to have as many of my games have a two-player simultaneous mode as possible. Yeah, Is there's a, a distinct lack of two-player uh, two-player games on you know 7800 and 2600 and it's always really nice when uh homebrew developers put that in uh even though most people play solo it's it's always nice especially for the show when tanya and i can play uh the game together but of course i've got a, a cat on my lap now um so we're gonna move on to uh let's see we're going to move on to Unawars. So many dead Unawar clowns. S. Oh, mispronounced it. Uh, I like Unawars better. <laughs> Which was, is one of your more recent games. Um... So another uh, arcade conversion, um, very, very fun game. So uh, let's see what other questions I have on here. Um, which of your projects, uh, this is from Carl G, which of your projects, current or past, has been the most technically challenging and why? Maybe back then, because of the pinball section. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, S. Ramirez, 2008. Other than Pac-Man, what is your next favorite coin-op or home console game? Specific game. Um, it's, well, it depends on the system. Um, Adventure, such as Atari, was the 2600 um, countermeasure. Um, as far as coin-ops, Asteroids, Galaga. Yeah. Uh, Donkey Kong. So. Yeah. So that's... A good section and Super Mario Brothers on the NES, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has a lot of uh, fast moving and variety of patterns uh, in this game. Is this another one where you were able to get a hold of uh, the original source code and be able to duplicate it perfectly? No, I just that one's one of the ones I just played over and over and watched videos on YouTube, and I said, okay, that's that's what's happening here. This is. This looks like that. What's going on? And quite so, complex. Yeah. Like they're they're like uh, yeah. circular movements and uh, yeah, it's really complex movements of the enemies. I played that in, in Mame and captured the video and went frame by frame to wow. see what how they move. Oh and wow! I, I wrote the dive books. I wrote them down. every left one, left two, down one, down three. That's how I did it. Wow. And did you convert that into like a mathematical formula or how would you represent that in the code? Um, if, if it was one that could be turned into a mathematical formula, I would. Otherwise, it's just a table with an index. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, this is a question from Debro who says, uh, what platform do you prefer? Uh, NES 7800 and why? He didn't say developing or playing on. So maybe, uh, obviously you prefer developing on the 7800, it seems. Um, what platform do you play the most? 
when you do play a game, um, not counting like arcade, but actual console consoles, yeah. Probably 7800. Yeah. And um, let's see. So uh, your games make, like I said before, your games make up about 50% or more of the Atari 7800 homebrew in the Atari Age store. And given that there is only 59 original games released for the 7800, you're probably the most prolific 7800 developer of all time. Like, it's almost guaranteed for sure. Um, at least for released boxed games. There could be other people who have done like tons and tons of little games. Um, are there any other 7800 homebrew developers uh, that you admire or specific games that you would say, oh, go check out this other 7800 homebrew game? God, there's a, there's a lot of them, but um, the ones that stand out to me, unfortunately, he's no longer with us, uh, Ken Siders. Mm. Uh, uh, he's he helped me do Super Pac-Man, uh, and he did um, Burger Time. Uh, no, sorry, Beef, <laughs> Beef Drop. Yep, yep. Um, and um, and Bonk. I almost said Cuba. Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, he he's the one who actually helped me figure out the high school routine. Um, because I, I, at first, I couldn't wrap my head around how it was, how it was working, um, mm. and he, he helped me with that. But um, yeah, that, that definitely been, been, been big influence I, on you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, and then, we're, this brings us to Galaxian, which is your most recent offering. Yes, kid. Yeah. Galaxian. Is that your favorite too? <laughs> Apparently it's Pixel's favorite. Oh, oh. watch out. Don't sit Ready. on the cat. Come on. Over Come you on, get. Pixel Kitty. Come on. There you go. There we go. And uh, this was one of your games that you wanted to make in a month, and it was uh, an offshoot of one of the levels of Uniwar S. Yeah. Uh, because I know I know that Uniwar S was was on ran, ran on Galaxian hardware, uh, oh, okay. I, in the arcades anyway. Yeah. Um, so I I knew it was going to have some similarities. Yeah, yeah. And was it one that you had been wanting to make for a while, or was it just like, oh, I can make it, and I will. <laughs> <laughs> I can make it now. I, I have to go into Galaxian. In fact, Kurt. But Kurt Mendel wanted me, there were two games he wanted me to do, Baby Pac-Man and Galaxian. Um, he never saw Galaxian, unfortunately, but he yeah. saw Baby well, yeah. That is unfortunate that we lost him. Uh, let's see, what other questions do I have to wrap it up with? Um... Uh, Um, so the, I don't know what memories you have of the 7800 when its original run was out, like the console was available in stores. Um, but, uh, obviously the 7800 is a more than capable machine of creating, like porting over arcade classics. Um, and I'd never really heard about it myself until well after it was gone. No, nobody I know had a 7800. Um, yeah. I, I, I know 2600 and that was pretty much about it um, and then it just jumped straight to NES um, but the quality of the games being developed right now in the homebrew realm for the 7800 is just astounding um, do, you, do you look back on the 7800 and, and during its release and feel that it was there was a huge waste of potential because I think it could have held its own, no problem, if it had the right developers back then. I agree with you. I, I think that would that could have been. I mean, there's a lot was going on at that time, so it's hard to. I think, uh, you can always look back and say, "Yeah, it's what it should have done." Of course. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, but yeah, it would have. It would have held up next to the NES, I believe. Oh yeah. Uh, 
they all they both have their strengths and weaknesses, so you know, different games, different platforms. But uh, yeah, I think it would have held up. And uh, how does the size of the games compare that you're making with these games compared to the original releases? Was uh, was price a concern? Because I know on the 2600 side of things, they're like, you can only make a 4K game, you can only make an 8K game, and during these years, because the cost of, of the memory was so much, is was would that have been a factor? Say, let's even say Galaxian here. Um, w was that a factor back then, during the 7800 era? I believe it was. I believe it was. Like, Gal this Galaxian's 32K. That's um, pretty big. And it probably with some, it, it probably could have gotten down to 16, which was what Galaga is and, and what Miss Pac Man is. And so, um, with some code efficiency, you know, then you probably could have gotten down to 16. Right. So, with, with some compromises, um, they would have been able to release this in a very decent form. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's. Um... Yeah, Brainless Angel says, I barely played 7800 in the day. So few worthwhile games. I'm trying to imagine that if I've been able to play things like Galaxian Port, like you're this Galaxian Port, uh, Bob, you were born too late. <laughs> yeah. We could always always imagine what if kind of scenarios back in when, when the original run came out and whatever mismanagement that happened or uh, decisions that they made. Um, we all we all love we all now can live in this utopia of amazing homebrew games for <laughs> for these retro systems and uh it's it's quite it's it's a really great um time to to love these systems that's for sure um now in terms of future plans i know somebody was kept on insisting that you talk about adventure three race for the chalice um now, there was no ROM that I could download for this game, so maybe you could uh, explain what you want to do with Adventure 3. Adventure... Uh, it, it, it started out Adventure with a little 2600, and then Ron did 200, Adventure 2, so I figured the next step was 7800, Adventure 3. Right. Um, but yeah, I wanted to have some elements of Adventure with some elements... Ele elephants? Elements? <laughs> elephants! <of> <laughs> With some elements of um, in television's Dungeons and Dragons, um, Cloudy Mountain. Oh, I, I love uh, that game. That was my favorite game in television. Mine too. Yeah, my my friend has an in television. I'd be like, let's play that one again. Play the D and D. Uh, put those two, and my idea is to have a split screen, and they have both players, Ooh. top and bottom, at the same time, going through uh, the castle instead of mountains. And um, if they encounter each other, they can try to kill each other and get their pieces of the chalice. But if they, if neither of them have, I think I had it, if, if neither of them have any ammo left, it becomes a co-op and they have to meet to both win the game at the same time. It, it was, I had, I had the, um, in the red. Um, wow, that I, sounds amazing, actually. <laughs> really, um, really good. Like split screen co-op versus depending. That's, that sounds like a lot of fun. Ten, you can't hear a thing. She's just fine. She doesn't have her earpiece in anymore. No. <laughs> unfortunately, I can't hear anything, so I'm just playing video games. And the other uh, game you were wanting to make moving forward uh, is possibly Resolve. And there was a uh, start of a ROM that yes. was posted. So we'll just load that up one second. It's still there. And if anybody has any uh, last-minute questions, um, definitely post them in the chat before we let Bob go here. <laughs> oh, is it going to work? Okay. Oh, uh-oh. No. It's not Try working. again? Because it was working uh, emulation on the JS7800. That's where I was playing with it. Let me try it again. Cool. Ready. There we go. Don't die, because I have to reset it. Mm. Run away. Mm. <laughs> the button doesn't reset it. 
Um, so this looks like a zombie game, a top-down zombie game. So is this a playoff of anything, or is this your own original uh, game? It's not a playoff of anything. It was just something that was that that came up, and I just wanted to do. And and uh, I believe either Pac-Man Red or Defender Twenty Six Hundred. Forgive me. I, I don't remember at the time, but one of them did the graphics for this. Yeah. Um, and it was, um, I believe it was Defender 2600 actually. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, it, it started to, it started to get a little complicated um, because I wasn't sure, that was one I was just doing as I was going along. Like I had, not, I had nothing special in mind. It was just whatever came, I would do it. And then I ran. <laughs> so it kind of looks like a, a smash tv kind of thing except with zombies and they're all coming at you was was that kind of an influence i've never played smash tv i don't know i, I have, okay um if that's the case then I, it could be <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah i mean uh, there's lots of games like that but a, an overhead game you have weapons you shoot them they're all coming at you but it's it looks like a great concept of course zombies are all the hotness or were the hotness <laughs> and uh yeah i love the the cop cars and the, the the cars in the street and the possible open world concept that you have going on here you sh it looks like you can wander around everywhere you want yeah uh, to a to a point there's a bigger there's a there's boundaries but it's bigger than the screen so it scrolls and moves the camera around like wherever right uh, RC70 says, looks like Retro Rampage, GTA with zombies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, S. Ramirez says, uh, need a, a 7800 double ender with this and Uniwars. I'm guessing he's <laughs> referring to Galaxian. So a double, oh. a double cartridge. Oh, that'd be a first. You'd have to make a special case for it. <laughs> that might be, might be a bit difficult. Uh, oh, Cafe Man 2D says, instead of Atari Vox Plus, I'd like to hear Vox say Pac-Man Plus. Uh, <laughs> you can program that. That'd be funny. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That'd be great if you could program the Atari Vox to, to say whatever you wanted when booting up. That'd be hilarious. It's not running. Sorry. No, it's fine. There we go. That doesn't work. No? No. Uh, That's weird. Let's see if I have any final questions. Oh, there's one more thing that you said you were working on. Um, that sounds very interesting. And maybe you can tell us a bit of the technical side of things behind this. Sorry. Uh, was the BIOS, a game in the 7800 BIOS that uh, you're working on with RevEng. Now, yeah. how does the BIOS have so much room in it that you could put a game into it? It's got... That's the bio screen that Revenge is working on. Oh, I and love that. I lo It looks so good. Yeah. And I think very... somebody commented, or you commented, that I wish we could have that uh, for for the actual BIOS or the boot up for games. Yeah. And that's, well, that's why I have this open W800. I rewired it to take an EPROM for the BIOS. So we're working. We've been working on that. We're trying to get... Um, we just got the PAL, <laughs> PAL BIOS... Um, doesn't it doesn't seem to play the ARM games correctly? Like um, it, it, Space Rocks or Scramble, the, yeah. the game, the ARM on the hundred, it doesn't detect them. It just it goes to the internal game. Um, okay. So we just got it. Um, well, mostly Revenge. I can't say we, but <laughs> <laughs> um, to work. To, to see these games. So it could also be a, a, an upgrade um, to somebody bias too. So, but um, yeah, we're trying to, I'm, to answer your question, sorry. Um, half the, the bias itself, even with that screen, is half, it's 8K. It's, slight, it's a little bit less than 8K. So okay. I'm gonna take the other 8K and make a game specifically for that bias. Um, so okay. that's, yeah. that's very cool so how would you if you don't have like the bios chip and get it and install it into your system 
would you be releasing this game as a separate release or would you be like no you have to get it you have to get this by us <laughs> uh, it's one i'm making specifically for it's not going to be it's just going to be a simple little game it's not going to be you know it's just going to be a little thing to, to go in there right so there's no cartridge in there so, <laughs> that'd yeah, be something that's... very unique to have would you be making an ntsc version and a pal version or is this just a pal by us only um it i think it's supposed to auto detect i gotta make sure of that that's a good question yeah. um i know the game will auto detect because i put that in all my late excuse me all my games lately like galaxy will auto, auto detect um and you know was will auto detect power or ntsc mm. so yeah so at least that one will very cool um oh uh one more question from the crowd uh from the chat uh, Neo Media asks. Neo Media asks. Uh, after you're finished porting all these arcade games, all of them, <laughs> I guess. Uh, do you have an original idea that you want to program? Um, oh, you're yeah. frozen. Maybe Can you hear me still? Yeah, you're frozen. Maybe restart your video. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that was the the whole thing with um, either Resolve or or uh, Adventure Three or. Yeah. There, there are a couple of other things I have uh, started, um, but I need more a plan, so to speak, because I found that doing Resolve, just like a, a out of the seat of my pants kind of thing, was not the way to go. You, you really have to have a, <laughs> a, a plan going forward. <laughs> Something mapped out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Resolve looks like it would be a ton of fun, mm -hmm. just from the the short little snippets that you can get away with playing <laughs> before you get swarmed by zombies. <laughs> um, so, um, is there is there anything else you want to talk about, or or announce, or say, or thank, or <laughs> anything you want to say? <laughs> oh, thank everybody. I mean, I, I, the Atari Age and the, and the whole community we have there is just amazing. Um, people are wonderful, um, but other other than that, I, I thank you so much for even thinking of me to do this. I, I really appreciate it. Oh no problem. I I love letting the developers uh, have a platform to talk about all their amazing games and and uh, it, numerous numerous games like we could have gone on for hours and hours and hours but i didn't want to keep you that long we've skipped a lot of games people like mm -hmm. so if you want to look um and see like everything that uh bob has touched definitely take a look at trebor's uh list on the atari age forums um and he has a full list of every game that, that bob has completed or started or it's it's a work in progress or like that so definitely check that out and uh, i want to thank you especially for coming on and and chatting with us uh, about all your amazing games and i i look forward to playing them on the show because <laughs> i really have only started, i got to play them all <laughs> yeah i haven't played any of them yet but I, i'm really looking forward to playing them because we've only kind of just started scratching the surface mm. for 7800 on the show We've only started playing them in the last six months, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and it's such a thriving uh, ecosystem right now. The 7800 is really taking off in the homebrew uh, scene with so many people releasing games mm -hmm. way, way, way more before because I've been doing the, the homebrew awards for the past couple of years and way more in 2021. Just like multiples more <laughs> so i'm really looking forward to uh all the amazing games from you and everybody else in the 7800 realm thank you thank you very much yeah. so i will let you go and thank you so much for coming on the show yep and uh we will see you in the forums mm -hmm. you will thank you very much <laughs> thanks bye, -bye. Well, thanks bob yeah. okay oh so Excellent. That was a lot of fun. Yes. Oh, take the earpiece out. <laughs> um, so we survived. We did. The technical glitches, well, amazingly. We, that Only took me like five is, minutes. The computer we use, my laptop is dying, dying, dying. So we're waiting for some replacement parts. And yeah. uh, hopefully we'll get that fixed. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, hopefully it's just the power supply and not something internal. Not something internal. Because we replaced the sure. battery on it. 
So it shouldn't be the battery? It could be the input, which I uh, don't know how we would fix that. So That would be the worst possible yeah. outcome, actually. If the plug, the, the plug is on damaged. the battery. Yeah. Uh, the plug on the laptop. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there might be a way to fix that, but we'll have to... We'll see. We'll see. Yep. Anyway, we'll that, see. you know, something's bound to happen when you do stuff live. So yeah, <laughs> at least yeah. we could, and You're within with five it. minutes, we figured something out. So yeah, yeah um, we have two cats here now who are, who have joined us, but the cat cam isn't on, so you can't see them. No, I find um, when I have the cat cam on, it's like, too many too much. things at once and well, things start breaking down when you're chatting with someone on the screen yeah. too yeah that's totally understandable um oh thank you so much leopold is a cat <laughs> and s ramirez and danny vc and lots of neo media and everybody else who uh enjoyed the show yeah vitoko apen i've lost count how many games were played to get a, a lot of games i've lost a count lot, too and i skipped a lot i mean well even what that pac-man game that's just a, a bunch of games yeah, i didn't in even it. go to that one well we played one we played yeah. played i played like briefly we, one game like we didn't get the pac-man collection we didn't get to the pac-man collection which is like pff, i don't know eight eight in one and then there he has his 40th yeah. anniversary version which we didn't get to either like like literally we could have done five hours if oh. we delved in deep, if you went deep, in deep. and did every single one yes yeah yeah so but lots and lots and lots of games we can't do that <laughs> yeah we'll yeah. leave it up to an exercise to the viewers uh so what's coming up on the show mm -hmm. i know i have in the schedule special unannounced event tomorrow but it's not tomorrow <laughs> i need to change that i i forgot that it was there mm. uh it's possibly on the 24th yes possibly on the 24th i'm glad it's not tomorrow yeah because that would have been a nightmare oh too much, uh, too much. for scheduling yeah. i'm also doing <laughs> some video work which is i need to do like right up to midnight tonight oh really yeah after oh, the show no. oh no We're all, okay. i'm almost done though so that's it's good, good. Um, it ebbs and flows right lots of work does. and then nothing so so we'll be back on tuesday mm. Uh, there's some great 2600 games. Mm. I mean, we skipped last Tuesday because of, or this past Tuesday because of all the work I had to do. Um, but there's some great 2600 games that have been recently released, mm -hmm. um, that we're going to get to. Excellent. It, it allows, it gives a bit of time for these games to build up. So you have yeah. a bit of a catalog to go to. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. Which and that's nice. why we introduced the 7800 games because yeah. there's so many being released. Yeah. And now I can trade back and forth Tuesday, Friday, them. Tuesday, yeah. Friday. No. Um, we're going to be doing a Tower of Rebel high score for the Harmony games next Friday. I think that's, yeah, next Friday, I think, or someday. <laughs> Might even do a Tuesday. Um, we are the big show coming up next that's going to end the season uh, is going to be a Champ Games exclusive world premiere of a secret game, Secret Ooh. New Homebrew. I don't know it. We don't, don't know. know it. Nobody uh, knows it except uh, John Champo and whoever is helping him. Something I want it to be. Oh, yeah. But we'll I see. think everybody has an idea of what they want it to be. You'll see my reaction if it's what I think it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What I want it to be. Um, hopefully, it's something that we're a little bit familiar with. Yeah. But it may not you be anything know. we're familiar with yeah. because there's so many games out there. It may be even be an original game. Uh, that yeah. we're, nobody's familiar with. It yeah. might be all that brand would be new. really cool. That yeah. would be really really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's fun because I don't need to prepare for it because <laughs> I have. You just show up. I just show it's up. It's like me every it single episode. I just show up. He yeah. just says, "This is what we're doing." Okay, that sounds good. It's kind good. of my break day. Yeah. Is when I get John Champo's unannounced Release. <laughs> secret games because I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, hey, Neo Meta says I'm so happy I found this channel and this channel <laughs> oh community <laughs> you found the channel and, and the, the channel and the well channel. i'm glad you found us yes and uh you're you've uh, enjoyed More? the show yeah. and we play 2600 games and 7800 games yeah homebrew 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 it's all homebrew yeah new games new games you've so many never seen on these on the yep. platform which is really cool because there's so many um streams that play all the old school games mm -hmm. um 7800 and 2600 yeah why why add another one why not celebrate the new games that people are making yeah and that's what i why i wanted to start the channel yeah um so yeah it's cool it's cool mm -hmm. it's fun doing it uh zph featuring pac-man earrings <laughs> they are very nice yes um so i want to thank everybody for uh hanging out with us today 
I wonder if you need to figure out another super secret password for John's game. He said mm -hmm. it won't be either. It won't be anything, or at least it won't be as complex as last time. John. Last time was <laughs> crazy. Go look at that last I, game. That it, it, well, here's the thing. I love the idea of having a little puzzle at the beginning. A little puzzle. It, <laughs> A little puzzle. But it became a bit stressful because it's like, what if we can't figure out the puzzle? Then? And he was giving us hints. And, and we're was like, giving I don't... us hints. It's like, John, just get us into the game. And we had to reread his original email for oh, the hints. Oh, he, he got crazy. us through it. He it did. was fine in the end, but yeah. it's just kind of funny. It's funny. Talk about putting a bit of pressure on. Yeah. But uh... Well, thank you, Atari 2600, dude. Um, oh, so yeah. thanks, for everybody, for hanging out. Uh, Neo Media, 1974, Atari 2600, dude, S. Ramirez, Caffeman 2D, RC7E, Crossbow, Dan AVC, S. Ramirez, uh, Leopold is a cat. That's a new name. Thanks for hanging out. I swear uh, I've heard that name before, but... Maybe. It's a good name. <laughs> so, so many names. Vitoko, Mike Soul. Oh, it's back again. Yeah. Thanks for coming back. Uh... Brainless Angel, that's definitely new. Mm -hmm. I supposed to. Uh, oh my goodness. Lots of people. DNS Debro. Uh, Jupiter Storm 17. Lots of, it's Kev 73. Hey, Kev, if you're still watching. Miss Command. Hey, Miss mm -hmm. Command. And that's all the names. There we go. Um, so we'll be back on Tuesday, same time, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern for some more gaming, some more fun gaming. That's right. And thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah. Oh, and hold on, hold oh, on. Hold oh, on. bring up the cats. Oh, you know, so they want to say hi. He'll attack me because he's not bye. too happy. Oh. He does not like being picked up. You just pet him and he'll calm not down. Not really. He'll bite you, but you that's know, okay. He's blinking, but he still has hate and he, rage. Yeah, he's he's a, he's he's not the cuddly cat like that. Yeah, oh, here it comes. Here comes the bites. Here comes the bites. <sighs> Protect yourself. So we'll see you next uh, week <laughs> on Tuesday. And thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.